Today I'd like to tell you about single qubits. And in order to explain how that works, I built a mechanical gyroscope, um, which has some of the same properties of a qubit, uh, dynamically speaking. Of course, it's not a qubit. It's a mechanical gyroscope. You spin it up, it's got classical spin, angular momentum. But be because of the Ehrenfest theorem, there's a way to map it onto the dynamics of a qubit. So right here what we have is a mechanical gyroscope on two gimbals. Yeah? And when we spin it up, let me do it with this general tool right here, so that we give it some money. So now what we did is we gave this thing some momentum. And just like you may have learned in your physics class, um, the momentum is conserved. And so when we apply a torque around the axis, we can get it to change its state, yeah, to rotate back and forth. Now, uh, a real, real gyroscope, you can point it straight up, or you can point it straight down. And what we can do is we can say these are analogous to the quantum mechanical states of up and down for a spin one-half system. A spin one-half system is a qubit. It has two possible states when you measure it. And um, now a real quantum mechanical system can be in a superposition also of the two mechanical states. This cannot. This is a classical system. However, we can map this system onto the block sphere, which is a representation of the qubit, so that um, when it's in a part like this, we can think of the qubit uh, as being in a superposition of up and down. The qubit would also give us, when measured, uh, an average measurement of up and down as well. So now, in order to change it, just like the regular qubit in the laboratory, what we do is we apply torques about it. And if we apply a torque like this, it'll spin around the z-axis. If we apply a torque like this, it'll spin around the azimuth axis. And in this way, we can actually change the state of the qubit. In the real qubits that we work with, the superconducting qubits, we use radio frequency fields, yeah, electromagnetic fields, in order to adjust, adjust the position and the state of the qubit. And so what happens is, as this processes around, we might come in and we might give it a periodic force. And this periodic force is exactly the same frequency as the precession of this gyroscope. So what we say is this precession is analogous to the frequency of the qubit. And in this way, we can actually see that right here, if we apply a periodic force, we can actually then change its state. And so because of this, you can actually play around sort of with mechanical qubit. So right here, we can make it go up, make it go down. And it's much more fun to play with in real life. There we go. Mechanical qubit.